it's so nice to see that some people stayed around. You know, the airplane here. So, um, and I'm Lee Stewart. My partner, George Bougainville, was supposed to be here presenting with me. Uh, he had other things, he, the business we had to go do. So he asked me to come here and present this. I mean, Asia Pacific part of the equation. Uh, our company, 3W, is um, a, a, a digital learning consulting company. We help um, education institutions move from a print culture to a digital culture in the 21st century. And so one of the areas that we really focus on is rural and uh, remote schools. And cloud is one of those areas that we've been working on uh, for the last five years and helping them come into the 21st century. Um, this is a picture of one of the beaches there. And uh, so if you're ever interested in Palau, I'm selling tickets to go out there. It's a beautiful place to vacation. This particular pilot was really started as an initiative from um, the Ministry of Education. Um, and the Ministry of Education, I've known him for about 20 years, and he's a very forward-thinking educator. And he wanted to do something different for the schools there because they had a lot of challenges in the simulator. And so he, I thought talking about digital learning, talked about open educational resources, and got really excited, found some funding, and said, let's do so. How many of you know where Palau is? We know you can. <laughs> we have a Palau in the back there, my friend. Palau is in the, uh, the Western Pacific, and um, you can see it's right here. So Australia, if you like down into the geography here, up here is going to be your, your, your Asia and China. It's about 8,500 miles from where we are here in Salt Lake City area. How do you get there? As I got to get to either uh, Hawaii first and then Guam second. Now we're going to go to Tokyo and Rio. Uh, you can come to other Taipei as well as to Manila. But uh, it is a long flight, typically, it's to take around about 14 hours to get out there. A little bit about Palau. As you can see, it's a lot of islands. 250 island nation. Um, it's in the western uh, Pacific Carolina Islands. Uh, population very small, 21,000. And uh, it's a former U.S. territory you know, after the war. America took over a lot of the western Pacific Islands there. They did gain independence in 1994. Um, and today they are part of the United Nations. They, it operates under the U.S. currency, uh, also the U.S. Uh, Laws, as well as the education system. So we go to their schools and see the curriculum. It's really identical to our curriculum back here. This is what the, one of the buildings of the high school looks like, the Palau High School. 3,600 students um, in the K-12 public schools. There are private schools there as well. Uh, there's 135 teaching staff. Most of them are Filipino. It's one of their challenges is language. A lot of the locals, uh, there's not a school of education in Palau. And so, uh, they, they bring a lot of the teachers in, though there are some Palauan teachers, particularly in the elementary area, but the language and communications is a challenge when you talk to it. Uh, there's 60 elementary schools and one high school. The challenge they have is out-of-date printed textbooks. Uh, their adoption cycle is typically 8 to 12 years. Some guys those 15 years. It depends upon if they have the money. Obviously, being a small country, that they may not have money for adoption, so that they're not going to adopt something. Um, so they still have the challenges of that there. Additionally, the shipping cost, because of the remote, everything's got to be shipped in. You don't dare want to air it in. So if you have a big pallet of books coming in, it can cost up to $75,000 and up to eight months to get out there. So very expensive. Internet connectivity is very slow and very, very expensive. They use satellite right now. And so we bandwidth just gets down in the daytime and almost nothing. Uh, so it's a real big challenge in that there. Additionally, we're trying to find people on algebra and trig, the higher upper level uh, math is very, very difficult to challenge out there. And like most remote communities. Uh, and the local teachers are not certified. You know, both are good hearted people, a lot of them are not certified and teach the need teachers. And language and culture is an instructional issue. Now the pilot program we began in uh, spring 2011 with the Minister of Education initiative. He wanted to uh, you know, start at the high school first, and we were in the high school for a year, uh, and then expand it into the elementary schools. And that uh, was funded by a United States education grant. 
Uh, they still have ties with the United States, so a lot of the grants that are available for schools back there are available for them too. And also the Department of Interior provides funding for these type of innovative programs. That's a three-year pilot, and it was a collaboration between the curriculum and the IT department. That was one of the things that we kind of helped them bring together, because we said, you know, you make this happen, you got to bring those two departments together, because they operated in silos, but now they got together. And it was a good thing to happen. The pilot technology included technology as well as training. Training and teacher training is very, very important. You see, we also train the administrators and made them aware of digital learning and open education resources. Again, we trained uh, the administrators and the principals. Uh, again, the challenge was the principals, you know, they were out there trying to assess the teachers, now they're using new strategies and new tools, so we had to make sure that they understood what was going on and where we're going to go. The pilots focused on open educational resource and uh, digital learning strategies, particularly teaching strategies. We wanted to make sure that not only understand how to use computers and technologies and devices and all OER, but how do I use that in instructional strategies effectively? So that's what we focused in on this pilot. The expectations to explore digital teaching and learning practices. We wanted to get new instructional resources to enrich uh, their, their, their learning. Uh, they, have, they didn't have a whole lot of resources out there, like a, you know, a resource center and such. Uh, you can only replace the out-of-date uh, uh, textbooks, reduce the cost, empower the teachers to be able to have on-demand uh, teaching resources in their classroom, find cost-effective ways to uh, localize their content. What they were doing was when they created a book that is, they, they'd write it on the island, they send it off to New York, they take it, edit it, come back, then they ship it back to them, they won't be able to do it on-site. And then when it came to student achievement, it wasn't a factor. What, the uh, minister wanted to do is he wanted to try something new. He wanted everybody to understand it first before we start assessing its achievement. And so right now, that's what the focus is on, is getting everybody to start changing their behaviors and changing the way they did instruction using the tools. Now, in the next couple of years, we're going back and doing the student achievement part of that here. The pilot components, was, components were the uh, classroom technology, which was the wireless infrastructure, uh, it is a wireless infrastructure that was set up. It had the tools and stuff you see the different types of devices that they have. The digital content, which was open educational resources. And our teacher training, of course, we focused on the instructional strategies of using these new tools and resources. Of course, the big challenge that we had out there was the internet. And we had to figure out a way, how do we access this content locally so they can have a good experience. And you know what it's like when you're downloading a video and it's like, <coughs> <coughs> you know, we had to be able to get that stuff really on demand fast. So what we did is we created a simulated online wireless environment, the intranet at each. And we did it through a server. And the server was set up to do 14 classrooms, 350 students. So just envision uh, within a building, like for example, the science building, we had a server that had all these OER collections on it. Then we took APs, which are access points, wired them all, and they all be able to access it wirely through various devices. So we had to build up, be able to do that locally. And at nighttime, if new content came up, they go down and download it up at nighttime when bandwidth was wide open. Uh, we had to create a user interface that was easy to organize and create lessons there. Uh, also had a variety of devices. They are going from iOS, Apple devices, to Android devices, devices that we used. The way they access it was using a uh, browser uh, to access the content in the interface. Yeah, well also, we had to have scalable both in the uh, buildings as well as the campus. So today, if you go to Palau High School, you'll see students sitting out in the lawn with their devices, actually accessing and doing stuff within, outside, not only in the classroom itself. The training, what we did in our training, we wanted to make sure the teachers adopted this. So instead of having the training, teachers being trained in isolation, we actually trained the teachers and students together. So when that teacher went to the classroom on Monday morning, if anything happened, the students were there to help them. And we found the adoption cycle went up like that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it was very, very effective. Additionally, what we did, because obviously we weren't there all the time, we created a CD that had all the training components that we did doing this training on a CD. We handed it out to every single teacher. 
Because we all knew they had the laptops, knew they had the devices. So now they had training on demand if they needed some catching up to do. The instructional strategies will be working on a small group project learning, the blended learning. Because obviously when you start taking on coming from a print environment to a digital environment, there are different skills that are required. So this is all brand new to them. You know, and one of the prerequisites obviously was they had to understand keyboarding skills. We wanted to focus on how do you use this stuff for instruction and education. So we spent a lot of time talking about the different type of learning environments and opportunities to provide. <coughs> we also did teacher-led instruction. This was a big thing that really enjoyed, particularly your, 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 your uh, higher math teachers being able to show simulations. Boy, they just went nuts when they just showed simulations. And so I had teacher stations. Um, so I had self-paced uh, instruction. So these are, these are the base instructional strategies we talked about. They also came up with others too. And also we were showing them flipped classroom strategies as well. Now the iClassroom defined is a wireless environment. So when you go into a Palau um, uh, iClassroom or Palau school today, you'll see um, that they are now having these devices alongside some of their traditional textbooks, but you see most of the devices out there. Everything is wireless in this interactive environment. Additionally, we're looking at putting the technology into the classrooms, not a lab. What they were used to is having a lab. And computer technology was, an you know, it was more like an event. OK, we've learned math today, now it's learned computer. You know, so we wanted to integrate it together to make sure that teachers, students, understood that this is part of their life and using the device. So the whole focus was bringing the classroom, not a computer lab. Also, each teacher um, had a multimedia presentation station so that they could now be able to create lessons and present it. Yes, they had their chalkboards. We really didn't change the classrooms at all. The classrooms stayed the same. It was just little black devices in the corners that were picking up the wireless information. Everybody came in with laptops. The teacher had his presentation station, but they still had their classroom just like they had before. So I was really more just bringing in the technology into a traditional classroom. And then the wireless infrastructure was set up, everything was wireless to a server, and then to be able to go out to various devices. So if they had Apple devices, if they had you know, uh, um, um, Android devices. Additionally, what we had, the Palau Rotary Club donated uh, $30,000 to help kids who uh, didn't, couldn't afford it to have devices. So we got community involved in it too to help come along in this digital learning environment. The interface that we created, um, you know, we had a customizer for our server. It uh, had to manage 47,000 plus OER resources. We had the Flexbooks, we had eBooks, interactive uh, simulations and videos. Uh, we had search organized and, and great lessons. Additionally, we had, to, uh, we had a collaboration tool, we had blogs, a test creation tool built out for them. And then I had to support multiple screen sizes as you went from tablets to, to laptops and such. These are the different uh, collections we have located at uh, the Flexbooks, uh, the Khan Academy, Wikipedia, FET, uh, in the uh, Project Gutenberg. These are the different types of the search by uh, the, the collections. Um, and then, of course, we had the blogging, and then we had the collaboration, and then we could be able to make a share by creating what we call a, a, a chalkboard that could be able to create a digital chalkboard lesson title, the instructions, we have URLs that go out, and this would be set, sent out to a Word document, sent out to a blog, and this is where the students got their instructions uh, if the teacher wasn't presenting the information. The outcomes are 76% 76, 76 of the teachers now are using OER in the classrooms. We saved a, a little under a million dollars in textbook costs in the first year. Uh, in the Palau High School, 42 classrooms are set up at iClassroom, totally wireless. And in the elementary school, 10 on each campus. Now, in the elementary school, it was the, um, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the seventh and eighth grades classes had the iClassrooms. We moved into lower grades later. And then um, Flexbooks, CK12 Flexbooks, were adopted for the uh, math and science. So no longer they purchase any of the content for that area. And then the teachers now customize and localize the content locally there. They no longer have to go to New York. Um, and then the uh, public library now is going to begin coming next year, one of the OAR. And then uh, we're doing a Marshall's Islands 
uh, project now, they're moving into open educational resources. And what we did basically is we helped with the planning of this. We developed and installed the water usage infrastructure, created the, the interface, uh, trained the teachers, you know, and we assisted, you know, in the promoting with the community and the speed. You know, we did the consulting, planning, implementation, and training, and then we focused really on rural areas there. And so that's really what the pilot program is about, you know, who we are. Um, and I want to thank you very much for today. And if you ever want to go to Palau, it's a lovely place to visit. <laughs> and it's a great place to dive. And it is the shark sanctuary that I've had today. So it's just this beautiful one there. Any questions? How am I doing on time? You have uh, plenty of time. Let's see, eight minutes. Eight minutes? My goodness. Good, any good time for questions. Any questions? Yes, sir. I guess I have a question about us uh, earlier. You mentioned that uh, student academic achievement for the first time through it was not uh, a major focus or a major concern. How did you word that in such a way? How did that pass? I forgot how you worded that. Uh, how, we, how, how I worded it? Yes. How we worded what you it said earlier about how you're able to make it so that um, the academic achievement was not the major concern of the project. Well, well I, it was really more the Minister of Education in that he really understood he wanted to change the behavior of the teachers. And therefore, try, testing could be a real <laughs> barrier sometimes. Mm -hmm. But anyway, he just knew that he wanted to focus in on, let's introduce this, let's get this up and running, let's start changing those aspects of changing the culture of it, then come back and do academic achievement. Now, it's also important to I point out. I like that a lot. I, wasn't, I, was, I like that idea a lot. In, in, in Palau, uh, again, he has a different setup. He is the Minister of Education. He doesn't have a school board. You know, he, he, so in essence, when he decides to do something, it's done. There's not a whole lot of politics. In it. So he, in essence, says, this is what I wanted to do. And um, so the testing wasn't really big at this point in time. Was there any assessment of what type of OER materials were they using in Khan Academy videos? Or, I mean, what, I mean, as far as digital assets, was there any any following as far as analytics on that? Uh, no, we, at this point in time, because it was new to, to them, we just wanted them to go through the assessment. We gave them basic collections. And we said, these are good collections for those been vetted back here. Uh, of course, when we talked with the uh, uh, CK12 Foundation, Khan Academy people, everybody, big, uh, good stuff. So we just said, here, this is your stuff. We asked, we got together with curriculum instruction. They were looking at their standards and mapping it. It met their standards. So we pretty much trained them to be able to start doing the assessment on their own. We didn't want to go tell them this is good and that's bad. We say, this is a pool of instructional material. Basically make it work. So there wasn't any matrix with them. Did I answer your question? I was wondering, you know, I was wondering if you knew are they using a lot of the videos to use like flip classroom? Was there any indication of the flip classroom was, was a challenge, a workaround we did with that because we was number one, the internet connection. The homes didn't have the same as in school. Right. Yeah. So basically the flip classroom is they have, they want to take a video. What we did was we had to get, actually capture the video uh, either digitally or on a uh, uh, analog device and take it home on a tape or something. Additionally, they liked the CK-12 Flexbooks because you could print on demand. So the, we did a lot of workarounds for that there. Thank you. Um, the LR server you're saying with all the, like, the Wikipedia, Gutenberg, and Khan, is that like available as like a download for anybody in the world? Or is that in that interface you guys had? Well, no, we're, we're not connected to the world. It was just for them. Right, so, but I mean, well, we download of your website like here. I mean, well, it's not it's not our content; it's only our content. content. Right, but I yeah. mean, you guys could. As far as I know, that's like the most organized, like into one server with all of that content. There's not anything else like that, and so if that was available off of your website as like a huge zip file or something, that would be. Well, all you have to do is go to CK12 Flexbooks and Khan Academy. And look down, they, they give you the iPad for that. That's what we did. Okay. So they, it, it, they, they made it available for us. So we we don't house it. We don't house it on our website. We just created an environment. 
Okay. Yeah. So right. it's still there. It's still OER. It's just right. we went to them. They gave us the APR. Our technical people downloaded onto a server. We ship servers out there. Okay. Did I explain it to you? It does, but I, I think what you guys did is really cool, and that like that interface that you guys created with all of that on one server. That I mean, as OER, you could have that on your website, and like that could all be. You don't have to. It doesn't have to be sitting on Khan or it could be sitting on your website. And Khan's not going to put it together with Gutenberg and Wikipedia. So having all that together would be a useful resource for a K through 12 school anywhere in the world. And they could just like download it from you guys, and they'd have this full curricula in a very easily searchable way. Well, they could create it themselves. I mean, yeah. So day to day, it's a very cool idea. I mean, that's the beauty of living in the digital age. I mean, it's a frontier out there. And there's some wonderful things we can do. Yeah. Any Where? more questions? Who wants to go to Palau? <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that we do is that my partner and I, when we created the company, uh, we're, I'm a co-founder. We, we work and hire associates who are teachers, who have expertise in certain areas. And they're the ones who go out and do the training. They're the ones who go out and do the implementation. And so I basically work with the Ministry of Education, and same with my partner, and then we put together teams to fly out there. So right now, we're also looking for someone to go out to the Marshall Islands to be able to help introduce and train open educational resources, uh, as well as digital learning environment. So if you know of anybody who has this kind of skill set who's interested, uh, we will pay for them to go out there. We'll pay for their airfare. We'll pay for all of it to go out there. And so I just want to share that with you. And you can be part of this scene. <laughs> I guess that's it. Any more questions? Thank you very much.